Hey guys, Steve here. Today we got to look at the Tier 6 Polish Destroyer Biscuit. Swirsky on the screen there. Notice base trait, increase ship concealment rating. That can be applied to all ships. If you put it on destroyers along with bay, that's how you get the double concealment build. I'll talk about Swirsky uh, at the tail end of this match once we are exited from the game. But in terms of this ship, it will be going on sale for Black Friday whenever those black versions of... We got Biscuit... Mutsu and Indianapolis, I believe, are the three this year. So, like we have a Sharn Horse B, uh, you'll see that on the enemy team potentially. War Spite B and Atlanta B. Those were last year's Black Friday ships. This year, those three. So, Biscuit's been highly anticipated. People want Swirsky. I think eventually it'll be Swirsky will be available in the game uh, whenever they do the pan European destroyers that they have on PC. I'm assuming he'll be one of the commanders. So, if you're tempted to buy it just for the commander, but you think you'll be playing for <laughs> a while, eventually you'll probably be able to get them for free. That's speculation, though. We don't know. Anyway, Biscuit, currently my most played ship in the game. Now, back before Wargaming was plying me with free premiums to test out for you guys in preview, uh, I actually bought this one, and it was my principal moneymaker back in the day when I was grinding up the lines early after the game came out. So that's a good reason as to why I have so many games in it, but I still like to play this ship. I still find it enjoyable. It's kind of middle of the tier in terms of torpedo DPM and gun DPM, but I think both systems are effective. The guns, nice against destroyers, pretty good. We'll see some gun play in this game here. Torpedoes, very quick reloading. I think it's about 70 seconds, give or take. I don't have the stats in front of me, but it's a nice cycling torp. You only have two launchers, three torpedoes per launcher, but that's all right. Anyway, jumping in this game, we got a domination mode on trap. Now, you can see we kind of preemptively torp towards the Laga. I didn't assume he would be <laughs> coming in here like this was an AI game. I, that was more kind of trying to shoot torps at what I suspect is a destroyer in this area. And you can see the Akatsuki actually pops up behind him for some reason. Uh, I guess he was expecting the Laga to scout for him. But we did get him with a Higon strike a second ago. And then the Akatsuki stops to smoke up there. And you can see, unless we're torping at really close ranges, uh, our torpedoes are just about up on reload after they reach the target. So that's a nice feature of the ship. They cycle very quickly. Yes, you don't have that many launchers, but, um, you know, the quick cycling reload, always an enticing option. Note the twist and drag here. We're using that to aid the torpedo strike here, the blind torpedo strike against that Agatsuki. That's that half moon crescent shape thing, the white line, you'll see it depending on what the background is, but that's telling you the location roughly of the closest ship. Very valuable. I always like commanders that have that, and I would recommend uh, giving them a strong consideration pretty much whenever the option's available. You can see they were going ahead and uh, kick on on that guy as well. So we got two dev strikes right off the bat. Cleared the side. We do have, I think there was a King George. No, the King George didn't spawn over here, but he's coming down here. Uh, but, you know, this is kind of the quick strike capability of the ship. AP on it is decent. I usually stick with the HE shells for the most part, though. Uh, you know, pretty effective, as we'll see throughout the match here. First order of business, we got to capture the base. But as we're doing that, we're evaluating the map. Now, we got B under our control. We're about to have the flank A under our control. And you can see they don't really have any pressure over here. So, capturing the flank and the center is kind of the foundation of most domination game wins. So... I'm not necessarily inclined to be playing caps at this point in time. We do have battleships sitting back here, and we do have one destroyer on the enemy team, but we don't think he's necessarily in the area. So the potential is there to get bogged down with torping these battleships. And in this situation, I'm actually considering doing it. I do want to get at least one strike out on this King George, but I'm keeping an eye on, number one, are they pressuring B? Because if they get over there and they start to drive blue off that cap and even potentially flip it, then we're in trouble. So we're going to definitely need to move over to B in response to any threatening movements by the red team into that position. But in the meantime, I'm keeping an eye on this King George. It looks briefly like he's going to turn hard left, and it looks like he's going to turn hard right. I think he's he's got some ships that are shooting at him, and he's going to start to react to that by turning the ship, angling potentially. So whenever your teammates begin shooting at a ship like that, uh, torpedo accuracy goes way down because they're usually going to be reacting to those shots. So once that happens, and you can see he's making a hard turn to the salt there, 
we launched that previous strike. But then I'm not getting bogged down with it. I'm not chasing him down to Timbuktu in the southeast corner, potentially. I could be chasing this guy for the rest of the game, launching torpedo strikes that he's dodging. And meanwhile, you know, red moves into B, they wipe out my team. Things can go awry very quickly. So don't fall for that type of play. If the ship like that, if that battleship, for instance, is moving in that direction, he's not really in position to capture bases, defend bases, affect the outcome of the game. So we're going to take one more shot at him. We did hit him with a flood there. I want to pile on with the fire since it doesn't look like he's able to put him out at the moment. But then we're going to disengage. We're going to get in B. We're going to get behind this island and begin to use these guns here. I want to support this Gneisenau that was kind of on a suicide run against the enemy Gneisenau on a Sharn horse. He's probably going to go down, but while he's alive, we know he's going to for sure be able to spot for us. We want to take advantage of that. Pulling around the island here, you can see we're undetected. Those shells are able to loft right over that, and we're going to get some free shots here and even start a fire on them. So a little bit of support fire there, and just driving them out of here, because they did note, I believe they saw that there was a destroyer here. They might not be in the mood to push into that, at least not quite yet. And the longer we can hold these two caps to their one, well, the, the bigger hole that they have to climb out of. So we are not an we have no incentive to push in here aggressively. We don't need to be doing anything crazy. We do have some torpedoes coming in there. Initially, I was going to hit forward and try and dodge those. Not sure where they came from, though. Not sure what the range was. So I decide, since we have a little backward momentum, to continue to back up, pop the smoke. This guy's going to be spotted. We do have some torps coming down. Put him right on the edge of that island there, because if he's coming this way... Uh, he's probably going to be going close to that. So that's kind of the aim point there. And then we're just going to be pepping him with this HE, trying to get some fires, trying to get some raw HE damage into that superstructure. And uh, we'll see what we can do here. Now note when we're in the smoke here, this is a good time to be taking a look at the map. Like we pointed out earlier when we're capping that base, we kind of slowed down to make sure we could cap the base. Now we're protected in the cloud. Both of these situations are nice, quiet times usually for destroyers. Take the time to check the map. You know, I can, I got a, what, four, five, six second reload looks like. So I can take the shot and then I can evaluate in between shots. We don't need to be staring at the shells. We don't need to be, uh, you know, too fixated on what's going down with the binoculars. But the map awareness kind of goes, it's hard. It's Destroyers are the hardest class, I think, to have good map awareness with. But I would practice that if you're still working on your map awareness. When you're watching replays like this, get in the habit of checking the map every, you know, 5, 10 seconds. Do it as often as you can. Start That'll start to, you know, become a habit. And once that becomes a habit, then you'll start to notice things like right now. And I'm, I can't remember the exact moment I noticed it, but I think it was roughly right now. Check to the east of us. The guy's making a play. It's a cruiser going around that island, and we are vulnerable to him. I'm still trying to work on this Normandy, and we're going to have that Sharn horse pushing in here too. But we want to keep an eye on that cruiser. You're going to see why <laughs> here in a second. Uh, but if we're just staring at this Normandy, for instance, we'll never see him. And, uh, you know, if you don't recognize the threats that are your way, coming your way, or you don't recognize opportunities like broadside targets uh, that are potential, you know, high damage, high value targets for you, things like that only come to you you know, destroyers popping up. You gotta be keeping an eye on that map. So anytime you kind of get a little bit of a breather like this, that's a good time to evaluate the game. And you can see here now, Normandy's pushing in. Sharnhorst took, taking the lead though. So we're gonna wait for him. I'm gonna actually try and hit him with this one launcher here. We do have him on fire. I do wanna take him out though. We wanna remove both of these battleships ideally. We only launch one. My expected play here is go around the north side of this island nuke that Normandy, assuming he's still alive with the other set. But now, we're going to see here in just a split second, right there, got spotted. And you can see simultaneously on the map, the cruiser popped up. We noticed that very quickly. Fiji, he's low health. Uh, we dodged the first one. Get a little clear careless here. I actually thought I could angle this guy's shells at this angle here. But the Fiji, we massively <laughs> underestimate him. So, in my mind, I was hoping to quickly kill him with the guns as I'm going around that island, and then swing right up the gut of that Normandy and blast him with the other salvo of torps. That guy, you know, finished me off. So even though we were aware of him, <laughs> it did, did pay off. Should have really abandoned the Sharn Horse is the correct play there, because he was on fire, he was probably going to die anyways. But even if he didn't, he can't force me off the cap. I'm not 
really in the major danger in that situation from him. Fiji, though, clearly existential threat to us, especially at that range. Again, I thought I could potentially angle those shells. Some destroyers uh, can angle those AP shells coming in from those ships, but, you know, regardless, he got me pretty good. So they'll go on to win the game. I do want to talk about the commander, though. I think a lot of people want to buy the ship just for the commander. Again, I think the commander will be available to everyone probably at some point, but it could be God knows when. Double concealment build is a strong destroyer commander build. I used to run it on all the destroyer lines back when there was American, uh, Japanese, British, and Germans. You know, it was a good build for all four of those. I now prefer Azura Lane Otago on most of those builds, but I have the double concealment build on this Polish ship and the German ships because essentially you get one half of that double concealment for free. It's a base trait, so you still get two inspirations. And for, you can, in Swirsky's case, I can put Bay on there and Otago, and that's an extremely powerful build. Likewise with Bay, I can put Swirsky on there as an inspiration and Otago, or anything else in that third slot. You know, and a, once again, very strong build. So because those two guys have the base trade built in, they can run double concealment and still get an extra third perk if you want to look at it that way. So really, that's all I run it now currently. I did up until recently have it on the USN Destroyers, who could always use a little bit of a boost in their concealment. But I put Burke on there to increase the accuracy. Destroyers, you got to keep in mind that they have the lowest base detectability, so decreasing that by a percentage, it's less of an effect than, say, Macau would be on cruisers. But again, powerful build. I don't normally give buy recommendations on this channel just because the cost of something, how much value a dollar is, varies from person to person, and it's not really my business to be telling anyone what to do with their money. But... I can say I, I did buy this one when I was still buying premiums back when the game came out, and I still continue to play it. So, anyway, that's a look at the biscuit for you guys, so we'll just skip forward here at the end. But if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Subscribers, by the way, a lot of people have been sending me messages about not getting notifications lately. I think they've tinkered with something on the back end. Number one, check that you have clicked the bell icon and set notifications on for the channel. Number two, go to your YouTube account settings if you click on like the icon in the top right corner of the screen uh go in there and make sure you have it set so it'll allow notifications but other than that i really don't know i mean youtube's always filling with stuff but anyway if you are subscribed appreciate it uh questions comments about the ship please leave below i'd love to hear from you guys and we'll see y'all later peace